Hi, welcome back. I'm Dr. Nupur Desai, an oncologist at the Cancer Vet. So last time we spoke about why we may do some of the tests required to diagnose cancer. And today we'll be talking about the different treatment options available in case of cancer diagnosis. So whenever we are thinking of different treatment options, um, I like to divide them in if it's a local treatment or if it's a systemic treatment, which means if we are going to give it injectably, if it's going to have side effects other than we are going to inject it from. So whenever we are thinking of local treatment, we're thinking of surgery and radiation as our two main uh, treatment options. Whenever we're thinking of a systemic uh, treatment option, we're thinking more of chemotherapy. And now we have um, newer therapies coming along as immunotherapy. So first, let's talk about the different treatment options available. And then we'll talk more in detail in a separate lecture about these. Before making any treatment decisions, like we discussed in the last talk, there are three main questions we need to answer. What type of tumor are we dealing with? If this tumor is local um, or is it systemic? So for example, if it is something like lymphoma, which we know is a systemic disease, it is where it's all over in the body. In that case, we would choose a systemic therapy like chemotherapy versus if this is something like an oral tumor where surgery can actually uh, cure it or give us a really long term survival, then in that case, we would treat uh, it with something like surgery. So knowing what type of tumor it is becomes very important. So what is it is the first question. The second question to answer is if it's spread to other parts of the body. If an oral tumor has already spread to the lungs, then in that case, we know the prognosis is not very good and we may not want to put the, the pet through a big oral surgery. In that case, we may offer some other uh, treatment options. And the third thing that we didn't talk about last time was how bad is this? One thing that can answer this is by our tests like chest x-rays, abdominal sonography. So these tests are going to tell us if the cancer is spread to other parts of the body. And if it is spread to other parts of the body, then in most cases, uh, it, that's not great news. There's one more test that we look at, which is called grade of the tumor. Um, if it is a higher grade tumor, the chances of this tumor spreading to other parts of the body are higher. And in that case, we might want to offer uh, something like chemotherapy after the, the primary treatment option. Now, grade of the tumor is only done after surgical removal and sending the whole tumor out to the pathologist. The grade of the tumor will be told by the pathologist and then we can decide the next steps. Now talking about local treatment options, let's say, let's talk about surgery first. One thing I get a lot is, doctor, I've heard if you touch cancer, it's going to spread everywhere else in the body. Um, I know this one dog who had a splenic hemangiosarcoma, they removed the tumor and it was it, in two months time, it already had spread to the lungs. Now, there are certain tumors which are highly metastatic, which means they will spread to the rest of the body no matter what you do so it's important to understand that one not all cancer is equal there's so many tumor types where surgery can actually cure your your pet so if we're looking at a low grade mast cell tumor soft tissue sarcoma a lot of oral tumors liver tumors lung tumors if we can surgically remove them they can actually live a very long time with surgery alone even without following up with any chemotherapy. So one thing to understand is the longer the cancer stays in the body, the higher the chances of it spreading to some other organ or higher the chances that surgery is going to be difficult. So as soon as you diagnose cancer, if this is surgically removable, um, if there are no other negative prognostic factors, um, surgery should usually be the first line of treatment and an oncologist should be able to help you with when surgery is the best option. Talking about radiation therapy, um, one question I get asked a lot is what is the difference between radiation and chemotherapy? Now radiation is when we give really high energy beams. Think of these like x-rays, really high energy x-rays to specific areas in the body to kill cancer cells. So this radiation causes DNA damage, which in turn will kill the cancer cells. 
Radiation is done in cases where surgery may no longer be an option. So we very routinely do this for certain brain tumors, nasal tumors, um, a certain tumors where it's very big uh, and surgery may not give us the best outcome. So certain oral tumors, um, even intrathoracic tumors like thymomas, you name it and most probably we can radiate it. Okay, But when to radiate it is important as well. If surgery can do a good job, surgery would be the first option. If surgery can't be done, in that case, radiation would be an option. And we'll talk in detail more about what are the different types of radiation in a separate talk. Now, these both are local therapies. What that means is the effect is going to be seen usually only in the location where you do the surgery or only in the location where you would um, radiate. The third treatment would be chemotherapy. Now, first question I get asked again is, we absolutely do not want to do chemotherapy because someone I know, a human, has been through chemotherapy and the side effects were terrible. What I can tell you is, most dogs and cats tolerate chemotherapy really well. The main reason for that is, we as veterinarians consider quality of life of utmost importance over um, quantity of life. We don't really cure most things with chemotherapy and that's because we don't give high enough doses. The intervals are much longer than what they would give in people. So because of all these reasons, the side effects are much lesser than what you would see in people. So talk to your oncologist about chemotherapy before just deciding not to do it. Because in certain tumors like multicentric lymphoma, which is one of the most common tumor types we see in dogs, we can significantly increase their survival with a really good quality of life. We'll talk more about chemotherapy, what the side effects are, what can you expect, as well as what can you do to reduce the side effects in again a separate talk. Then immunotherapy is the next treatment option that is fast becoming uh, available, especially in people. In the veterinary world, there are multiple clinical trials going on right now to see the actual benefit of immunotherapy. At this point, we don't have anything that is commercially available, but we should get it soon. And it's a very exciting field. And hopefully we'll be able to improve survival in a lot of tumor types. One thing that I also want to stress about is hospice care. So if unfortunately the cancer is detected late, if there is metastatic disease, if there is spread of the cancer, or for some reason we decide not to treat the cancer, it is very important to ensure that your pet is comfortable. So talk to your oncologist about what are the clinical signs. We can prescribe certain pain medications, we can prescribe certain symptomatic medications to make the quality of life better. So even though we don't have definite treatment options for certain tumor types, we can absolutely help you make um, the quality of life much better. In the next talk, we'll talk more in detail about chemotherapy and some of the side effects and how to prevent them. Um, and we'll see you then.